Good afternoon. My name is Dr. William Kurt Armstrong, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about how to continue to thrive into your 70s, 80s, and 90s. First, just a little bit about me. I'm originally from Southern California. I grew up in San Diego, and when I was 16, I moved up to Laguna Beach and graduated from Laguna Beach High School. Then I went up to the University of Montana in Missoula, Montana, and got a degree in biology and then ultimately moved to Dublin, Ireland, where I went to Trinity College and got my medical degree. And in this photo here is just a picture of our library at Trinity, uh, which was a nice one. Uh, and then I came back to California and did my residency at Kaiser Permanente here in Orange County. So what I want to talk about today uh, really is very important to me and, uh, and hopefully to all of you. Uh, what's happening in our country right now is in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, only about 3 to 10 percent of our population was over the age of 65. As of 2000, it was 12 percent uh, over the age of 65, and soon it will be nearly 20 percent. So we have a, a group of seniors that are getting larger, and, um, and what we're really doing a good job at is getting people to uh, uh, you know, manage chronic diseases and to get older, but what we really need to work on is how to thrive going into those years and how we stay healthy and active as long as possible. What else is happening is that as we get older, our roles shift. So we become the guardians of tradition, uh, guardians of knowledge and wisdom, but our bodies need a little bit more help uh, as we get uh, along there. I have a thing that I call the five principles. It's really a modification of um, what goes on in blue zones. And blue zones are places in the world where people routinely live into their 90s and beyond, and they're healthy. And so there's a concept um, called successful aging and exceptional aging. And in, in these places, people uh, have exceptional aging. So I've basically boiled them down. And if you're a patient of mine, you've probably heard me say this a million times. And I always talk about these five, and it's real easy for me because I have five fingers and I can rattle them off real quickly. But essentially, maintain a normal body weight, exercise most days of the week, so that's four days out of the week, no tobacco, alcohol only in moderation, and then managing our stress. And I'm going to go through each of these. The other thing that I always talk about with people is, is what we really need to be doing to stay active and healthy going into the future. Uh, we need to apply these five principles, and that's being proactive. And, and it's very important that we're, we're engaging and being proactive. Seeking out meaning, I think, is probably the most important thing. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. But we really need to have purpose. And, and that drives everything that we do um, as we get older. Um, the basics, you know, make sure you go to your doctor, make sure that you're getting vaccinations when you're supposed to get vaccinations, make sure that you're doing blood tests, uh, just making, you know, that, that somebody is looking after your health. And then, like I said, there's that concept of successful aging, which is really about getting people to be free of disease and be as functional and active as possible. The other part that I always talk about, too, is avoiding being reactive. So there's nothing worse than being kind of caught on our heels. And it happens a lot, actually. People don't go to the doctor. They don't know they have high blood pressure. And then they have a stroke. And then we have to kind of you know, manage that issue. So we have to avoid those reactive sort of situations. The other thing to do to plan ahead is make sure that we have thought about these things, doing advanced directives. So that's deciding who's going to make decisions for you if you can't make decisions on your own. Uh, being honest about our abilities. I wrote in here, you see two things, ADLs and IADLs, um, which for most people don't mean anything. Um, but ADLs are activities of daily living. So there's six of them, but it's bathing, dressing, eating, transferring in and out of chairs or in and out of bed, using the restroom, and then continence. And IADLs are instrumental or independent activities of daily living. And these include driving, uh, preparing food for ourselves, using a telephone, using a computer, which is hard for sometimes at any age. Uh, depends on how much you do. Hopefully, you have some kids around. Uh, and then what we're trying to do is kind of stay away from this. So this kind of diagram here really shows how the interaction between frailty, disability, and impairment, uh, psychological impairment, uh, kind of come together to create what, what we call failure to thrive. So like I said, we want successful aging. We do not want failure to thrive. You know? So that's, that's where these kind of principles boil down. The first one, well, let's see what Hippocrates has to say here. So 
ancient wisdom, always good. So uh, over 2,000 years, is about 2,300 years ago anyway, uh, uh, Hippocrates, he knew a lot, and uh, he said everything in excess is opposed to nature. This he applied to diet. So even back then, sometimes people were eating and drinking too much. And so, uh, so he, uh, he, that's one of his sayings. As we get older, our ability to digest food changes. Um, we've all had you know, times where we said, I just can't eat like I used to. Well, that's true, you know, that as we get older, our gastrointestinal tract does change, it slows down a little bit. We're not uh, producing as many digestive enzymes as, that, as we once did. Um, we may not be as active, so we don't have as much demand um, for those calories. Um, and then the other thing is, is our ability to, um, you know, kind of prepare food. So this is maybe as people are getting uh, older and those ADLs are being affected. Um, so that's kind of what goes on. We need to make sure that we have a nutritious diet. These labels have basically been put on everything. Uh, they're put out there by the FDA and they kind of tell you what's in your food. And, and I encourage everyone to look at them, but the ones that we want to kind of really look at is we want to stay away from these ones. So this is the saturated fats, trans fats, cholesterol, sodium. Uh, if you have any high cholesterol levels, heart disease, hypertension, you've probably been told this um, a lot, but these are, these are the ones that we really want to avoid. And then we want to make sure that we're getting enough of these. So dietary fiber, uh, there's a concept of what's called prebiotic. Um, lots of people have heard of probiotics, uh, which are essentially bacterial cultures that live in our GI tract and keep our GI tract healthy. But prebiotics are non-digestible elements that, that basically pull fluid into our GI tract, and that's what dietary fiber is. You don't digest it. It stays in there and it passes out uh, the backside, but it helps keep you regular uh, and, and, and just kind of going to the bathroom normally. Vitamins are really important. Uh, the one that we see, um, and I'll go forward here, um, and the vitamins are also on those, those labels. We don't see a lot of uh, vitamin deficiencies, uh, but I want to bring up the one that we do see regularly is uh, vitamin D deficiency. And uh, usually it's from not getting enough in your diet. So supplementing vitamin D is very good for bone health, um, uh, especially for women uh, over the age of 65, but men as well. Sunlight doesn't give you vitamin D, it activates diet, vitamin D. So you have to eat it first and then the sunlight will help to activate it. So by definition, a vitamin is something that your body cannot produce on its own. It needs to be ingested. Um, so examples of things that have lots of vitamin D, eggs, it's fortified in milk. You know, so those are the places that we see it. Vitamin D, vitamin B, or sorry, vitamin C and vitamin B12 um, found in citrus and meats. Um, it's okay to take a multivitamin. I always prefer people eating food um, because I just think it's a, a, a better source of vitamins. Um, but taking a multivitamin, if you're not getting enough, is, is a good idea. But it doesn't make up for a bad habit. So the thing I always bring up is that if we're taking a handful of vitamins and supplements a day, but still smoking, probably not balancing it out, you know? So, so make sure that you're not, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, kind of doing that balancing act there. Dietary supplements, I just bring this up briefly. Um, there's a lot of questions about, you know, the, the reliability of these products. Uh, they're not, there's not a lot of oversight to them. If you turn the bottle around, every single one of them has a warning on it saying that this is not intended to treat uh, or improve any medical condition. So it's kind of a buyer beware situation. Most of the time, I think that there's little harm, but I usually tell people just watch out for your pocketbook. Um, and then if we have, uh, if we're a little bit heavy, you know, that's the most important part of this diet aspect, right? We want to eat good foods, but we also want to maintain that normal body weight. And uh, and you can talk to your doctor about it. But we have terms uh, we we call, you know, we it's the BMI, the body mass index. Uh, we define normals between 20 and 25. Um, it doesn't apply to everyone. You know, we're all a little different. So some people are 27 and, and maybe that's a normal body weight for them. Over 30 is obese. Um, unfortunately, in this country, we're seeing that number rise and rise and rise. And currently it's about one third of adults. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a challenge. And um, there are lots of ways to lose weight. One of the best is probably Weight Watchers. Full disclosure, they don't pay me anything to say that. Um, but it's just good. You know, it's a very simplified uh, calorie counting program that has a lot of 
like dietitian data built into it. So when they say that's one point, but this one's two points, there, there's, there's a rhyme or a reason to that. It's not just based off of calorie counting. Um, there are some medications that are coming out. If you read the newspaper or the health section over the last few days, uh, Wegovy is a uh, diabetes medication that has come out as a, as a way to lose weight. Uh, Saxenda is another one that has been out, um, and uh, I've used it uh, uh, with patients and actually had some success with it. So, um, you know, really the holy grail of the pharmaceutical industry would be to have a weight loss tablet um, and, you know, probably we'd all take it, I guess. And then last resort, of course, is surgery. So, so that's, our, that's our first thing, maintaining the normal body weight. Special circumstances with diet, if you have cardiovascular disease, we kind of touched on the salt. Uh, we call it DASH diets, dietary approaches to stop hypertension, um, avoiding caffeine, uh, diabetes. This is a, uh, a huge topic, um, but you know, not being able to control uh, carbohydrates uh, or how our body uh, deals with carbohydrates is, 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 is quite important. So that's one, if, if you do have that, you should be talking to your doctor uh, about that. Uh, our skin health, you know, so vitamin C, um, you know, these, these things all help make uh, better skin. Uh, I'm not in a room with all of you, but I'm sure if I asked, is there anyone out there that thinks that their skin has changed a little bit as they've gotten older? I'm sure there would be a lot of hands going up. And, uh, and that's the integrity of our skin, you know, so it tears easier, we bruise easier, all of those things. And, and diet can help with that. Um, medications, uh, so there are certain medications if you're taking them that can um, either require certain times of day to take them so that they're absorbed uh, or they interact with food. Uh, 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 warfarin is, is famous for uh, interacting with vitamin K. It's actually what we use to reverse uh, the effects of it. So you have to know some of those things and maybe discuss it with your doctor as well. So back to Hippocrates, uh, walking is, man, is man's best medicine. So I really agree with that. I think that exercise is the panacea. I think it's the, the, the thing that we really need more of and, and really can't get enough of. Um, so the CDC does have recommendations for, for anyone over the age of 65. And I wanna emphasize the word and here. So it's not a or, so they want you to do, um, this, is, this is basically per week. So 150 minutes of aerobic exercise and muscle strengthening activities. And this goes into a lot of the things with, if, if we're gonna thrive, we need to be preventing things that are gonna harm us, falling, uh, we need to have uh, uh, good cardiovascular health. So that's how, how, how these recommendations work. So I think that this is very important. Now I, I do uh, say here that they even go on a step further and say for, for even better benefit, it would be better if you essentially doubled that. Um, and so, so the, the, the needing exercise is very important. A lot of times if we have arthritis or if we have something that is uh, limiting us from exercise, we kind of feel like we can't exercise. Generally speaking though, you, you should still continue to exercise and find the right ones. So people that have lots of arthritic issues, I'm usually recommending for them uh, aquatic uh, exercise. So getting in a pool, that kind of thing. Personally, I surf all the time. So these are pictures of me up, uh, this is actually north of Bakersfield, which is bizarre, um, but there's a surf pool up there that a guy Kelly Slater made, um, and I had an opportunity to go surf the pool uh, this December. That water is 48 degrees. Um, so quite cold uh, when I was up there. But I think that finding a sport is really important too because it ticks off a lot of the boxes. It helps us stay active, helps us maintain our body weight, but it has a lot of social components to it and also has a hobby component to it, which, which helps with meaning. Um, so I know that for myself, uh, and, and before we got live here, I was talking to everyone in the room uh, about, you know, I spend a lot of time thinking about surfing, talking about surfing, looking at surfboards, talking to my friends about surfboards. Uh, you know, and it has a culture uh, all to itself. So, so there's, a, there's a huge social aspect to it. So surfing is not for everyone, but golf um, is one that I have a lot of patients that they really, they travel to do it. So these things really get, um, you know, get people, um, uh, you know, kind of ticking all of those boxes. So if you, if you have a sport, try to, try to find one. Uh, the benefits of exercise are, are, you know, kind of 
I, I think obvious, but, but you can see all of these. Uh, dying prematurely, I don't want that. Dying from heart disease, I don't want that either. I want to lower my risk of stroke, diabetes, colon cancer, depression, anxiety, and I want to promote psychological well-being. So these are all really wonderful things that exercise does for us. So get out and play. This again is Trinity uh, over in Ireland. That's the cricket pitch, um, which is a game that I will never understand. And I, I mean, that could be a hobby, is just trying to understand uh, how that game works. Um, tobacco, so that's our number three, right? So, so tobacco, I, I want to say never, you know, but, but tobacco really has nothing redeeming about it. Um, and it, you know, heart disease, stroke, it's not just cancer. So everyone thinks that it's lung cancer is the real risk there, but it really is everything. And I just kind of tell everyone, if you're smoking, talk to us. We can help you quit, but we got to get you to quit because that is a, that is, the, like I said, there's nothing redeeming there. And, and I think, a, you know, sometimes a, a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, I, you know, if, again, I'm not in the room with you, but I'm sure if I asked everyone to guess which, which lungs were the smoker's lungs, you could probably point it out, but, but they're the, they're the black ones over there. Okay. Alcohol. So alcohol is a, uh, you know, in moderation, it's part of culture. So, um, my background is an Irish background. Um, you know, so every culture has some sort of cultural relationship with alcohol. The use in moderation, I, I always bring this up first. This does not apply to you if you have a disease condition that, that forbades you from using alcohol or if you have alcoholism. If you're an alcoholic, there is, there's, there's alcohol, you need to stay away from it as much as possible. Um, here, uh, the recommendations though for men is no more than two drinks uh, per day and no more than 14 in a seven day period. Uh, women, unfortunately, there's not uh, you know, pure equality here. So women, uh, it's one drink per day and no more than seven in a week. Um, there are clear harms to using uh, alcohol and my Irish background, there's a Guinness, um, you know, but, but there's risk for heart disease, risk for liver disease, which is cirrhosis, it's scarring in the liver. There's multiple cancers that have been associated with it. As we get older, the, the one on there, falls and accidents, really important. Uh, gout, which is a uh, type of um, uh, arthritis that people get where crystals form in your joints is very, very painful. And then violence and suicide. So, so alcohol is associated with a lot of social harms and so much so that, that uh, you know, at one point in this country, we had a temperance movement and we, we somehow all got together and ratified the constitution with an amendment to ban alcohol. Uh, and then I believe it was 13 years later, rescinded that, um, you know, but, but there's, there's clear harms there. Um, the benefits. So, I think that's a shark lingering under the water. So uh, I always just say that the benefits are murky at best. There really is no clear evidence. Uh, people come into me all the time and they say, well, I drink wine for the health benefit. There really isn't a health benefit. It, it, drink wine because you want to drink wine and do it in moderation and do it responsibly and you know, don't, don't get in a car, um, that kind of thing. Uh, more recently, there's a lot of research that has come along um, saying that there may not be a safe level of alcohol consumption. And that mostly has to do with cognitive uh, function. So there's, there's some concerns that even any alcohol is, is limiting our brain's ability to um, you know, function its best. Um, so I always say this to people, swim carefully. Uh, and so th this, this next part, in, this is our last uh, you know, kind of finger uh, on our five principles. And this one's actually my favorite. So, so stress. So at different stages of our life, um, we have different types of stress. Uh, I always feel like what's the point of the previous four things if we're not happy and enjoying our life and free of, of stress, as, as, as free of stress as that we can become. Uh, you know, this gentleman is, is stressed out from, from it looks like studying anatomy. Uh, but as we get older, things change um, and our stressors change too. So we see a lot of stress from isolation. Uh, during this last year, uh, during the pandemic, it, it, many conversations with our, with our older patients, just about you know, being on lockdown, being at home, being alone, not being able to hug the grandkids. Um, you know, it, 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 
that's a real stress for people. Financial hardship, if we're retired and we don't have you know, an income, um, grief, we start losing friends, um, families, spouse, that kind of thing. Um, abuse and neglect occurs. And then, and then, of course, loss of function. So these are all different things that stress us out as we get older. Um, you know, and, and really, you know, the other thing that I should add in here, too, is that if we're also really crossing over into that I'm feeling depression, I'm feeling anxiety all the time, that is another time where you should talk to your doctor about that because we do a lot of good work um, to get people out of those situations. So to combat stress, you know, one of the most important things, and this goes back to those blue zones, um, is that in all of those blue zones, the, the unifying theme is that there was, there was purpose. And in some places, it was uh, religious in nature. So um, just for instance, um, Loma Linda is a, is a blue zone. Um, and it's a blue zone, and it's primarily populated by Seventh-day Adventists, um, which have, you know, deep religious beliefs. Um, but they also have, um, like, uh, embedded within that is this, uh, like, these concepts on, on health and, um, you know, the, basically vegetarian diets, um, but a lot of meaning. Um, I, I like this one, ikigai. So that's a, that's a Japanese word, um, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I know I spelled it correctly. Um, and it's, uh, it's a, it's a it's, so Okinawa, Japan is also a blue zone. And ikigai means um, uh, live with purpose or life with purpose. So, so they have their own word, which just kind of is like, hey, have a meaningful life. Um, and there's a lot of ways to find it. So we, uh, you know, religious beliefs, a lot of people, um, find a tremendous amount of, of, of meaning and, and purpose. It's a pretty complex universe. And um, you know, having that kind of uh, structure, it, it really does help. Um, hobbies, um, art, being creative. If, if you're you know, academics, and this is at any level. So um, you know, if you want to uh, you know, make uh, sun catchers uh, you know, at home, uh, if you want to paint paintings, um, you know, writing, journaling, all of these things help to create purpose to our day and to our life, uh, our families, our careers. Um, the career part, when we retire, um, you can still be active in your career. So there's always, uh, you know, emeritus roles out there. And so there, you know, if you go to you know, we haven't had it because of uh, COVID, but if you go to like Grand Rounds in any hospital, there generally are quite a few retired physicians that go and they, be, they be maintain that contact with their career uh, through that. So these are all really important ways for us to, um, you know, kind of maintain that meaning. But overall, we need to belong. Um, also part of it is that mental exercise. Um, I don't think this brain's getting much exercise anymore, uh, but it looks like it probably was a healthy brain. Um, but, but engaging socially, and that goes back to the sports as well, you know, if, if you know, we need to be, we need other people. Um, I think as we kind of emerge from this pandemic, we're gonna see that a lot of people, um, uh, that there was a consequence to that not engaging socially all the time. Sleep uh, as a priority, very important. Uh, pursuing our ikigai. Um, so, uh, and then, you know, reading, writing, playing games. And then this is a, this is a, a thing my, my son would say, but be a noob. Uh, a noob is somebody that's new to something. So it's like, if you're not good at like, you know, not good at like a certain video game, you're a noob. Um, but, uh, but, but there is a whole lot of research that engaging in new activities that you don't know about and are difficult, it, it sets your brain on fire in a good way. So it might be frustrating to learn something new uh, or to, you know, pick up a set of golf clubs and try to go out and learn how to play golf. But as far as your brain goes, it's extremely rewarding. Uh, also part of the reducing stress, and this goes back to that, um, you know, avoiding the reactive, you know, we need to think ahead. Um, uh, you know, so the Boy Scouts, you know, they were always, you know, be prepared. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we need to, we need to think ahead. 
that advanced directive, talk to your doctor about that. Every time you go in the hospital, we're try gonna try to get you to fill one out. There's a thing called a pulsed form, which really kind of identifies what your uh, desires would be in terms of resuscitation and things like that. Not fun topics to talk about, but, but important to think ahead um, so that if you were in that situation, somebody uh, uh, knows what to do. Um, goes down to the make your wishes known, um, you know, regular checkups, um, and, then, and then important, uh, you know, being honest with yourself about those ADLs. If you need glasses, wear glasses. If you need hearing aids, get hearing aids. If you need a cane, use a cane. These things are going to help you thrive. So they're, 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 it's important to address all of that. So when we apply all of this stuff, you know, applying what we've learned today and hopefully, you know, um, it sticks, I think it's real simple. So we're going to work on all five of those principles. We're going to be proactive with our health. So you're going to come in and see your doctor. You're going to make sure you're doing the five principles. Um, you know, uh, we're going to avoid those reactive situations by planning ahead. Uh, we're going to have meaning. Uh, and then we're going to get out there and we're going to rock. Um, so uh, I put up just here a few additional uh, resources. Um, you know, that if you ever wanted to look, Hogue is just such a wonderful uh, hospital. It's just a, uh, um, you know, we're really fortunate to have Hogue in our community. Um, your doctor, you know, reach out to them. The National Institute on Aging it has a lot of interesting uh, information. And these are kind of like books that, that I just find very eye-opening about the medical world and, and how, we, um, how we do as we kind of get older in that medical world. Um, but, but check those out. So thank you very much for joining me this evening. And I do think that we have some questions. Um, so let me pull over here. Oh, these are good questions. All right, so the first one uh, is swimming a muscle strengthening exercise. So it actually is both, right? So when we're swimming, our heart rate goes up because we are, um, you, know, you know, there's increased demand. And what that demand is is that we're using our, our, our muscles and there's some resistance in swimming. So you'll see swimmers a lot of times will have very developed shoulders. And that really is because they're using those muscles. Um, and so, yes, so, so that I think you get a twofer uh, with the swimming uh, for muscle strengthening and for cardiovascular exercise. Um, and then the next question, uh, is there a comfortable shoe you recommend for those with flat feet? no arches. Um, certainly not the shoes I'm wearing right now, um, but, uh, but these, are, these are very nice shoes. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so good question. So getting out there and being active, I think this goes in that category of like, you know, if we need an assisted device, that kind of thing. Certainly if it's very severe, the, the flat feet, you may want to be seen by your doctor or a podiatrist, and they do have orthotics. Um, they the orthotic industry has been a little bit upended uh, because they actually manufacture great shoes that are like kind of semi-customized. Um, and, and again, I'm not marketing somebody else or uh, somebody here, but there, there's, a, there's a place called The Walking Store, um, which is a, it, and there's multiple places like this where they essentially sell shoes for people with uh, issues with their feet. And so you can go in there and they'll actually have you stand on a mat and it'll kind of like, you know, sort of uh, analyze your feet a little bit and they'll have recommendations on, on what to use. And so, yeah, so I would look into that walking, uh, uh, I think it's the walking company, um, you know, and then uh, I, I have uh, personally a, 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 had a severe foot injury uh, uh, during COVID. And, uh, and so it's very difficult for me to wear uh, some shoes sometimes. So I, there's a company called Hoka, H-O-K-A, um, which are the most comfortable shoes I've ever put on my feet. Um, so those uh, you might check out as well. And it looks like we have another question. Any suggestions on what kind of water to drink? Uh, uh, whole house filter. So that's a great question too. So, so tap water uh, in our country is very, very safe. Um, you know, so in its, in its good water, um, this, I probably have a complex answer to this that you probably don't want, but I'm going to give it anyway. So, um, so one thing about water is, you know, single use plastics. So, you know, you got to kind of make a decision on, on, you know, like, like how you're going to consume that water. There, there really is not a huge difference between bottled water and tap water. 
So you can you can drink tap water. Uh, the whole house filters are really good. Um, they remove a lot of um, uh, impurities from the water. Uh, but generally, you know, uh, here um, our water systems are 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 pretty robust, and and you're drinking safe water if you're drinking out of the tap. Um, I don't know about drinking out of the hose in the backyard, uh, which I used to do all the time. And I encourage you, if there's any other questions, uh, please send them in. Um, we're going to wrap up here, but um, if you send them in, they'll get them to me, and I will try to answer them for you. And again, my name is Dr. William Kurt Armstrong. I'm a family physician here in Newport Beach. My practice is called Newport Family Medicine, uh, and I'm a part of Hogue Physician Partners. So thank you very much for coming tonight.